skills. Okay. Ready? Okay. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the January 4, 2021 Ordinance Review Committee. This meeting and all who participate in it with us on Zoom will be audio and video recorded. First up uh, on their agenda is the roll call. Laura, could you please? Okay. Councillor Foss, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Councillor Labard. <laughs> Councillor Nash. Here. Councillor Thorpe. Here. Um, Member Napolitano. Here. And Member Peck. Here. Okay. Looks like we have a full quorum. Next up is public comment. We will begin as always with public comment. If you know you wish to make a public comment, please use the raise hand feature. To raise your hand, you click on participants in the horizontal menu bar at the bottom of the screen. A column will open with the participants of the meeting. The raise hand feature is at the bottom of the column. If you're calling in by hand, raise your hand by hitting star nine. If you're having trouble raising your hand, you may use the chat feature to send a message to me. I will do my best to monitor that for people having technical difficulties, but that is the only purpose for which we will use that function. It will only be used during public comment. We will unmute each hand raised one by one and ask if you would like to make a comment. When you begin, please state your name and your city or town for public record. We do not respond during public comment as it is your time to speak. So while your comment should be directed to us, you will understand when we don't respond due to the size of the meeting that, is, that it is public and how remote participation works, all participants will need to be muted until called upon. I also ask that all but the committee members turn off your video until called upon, as comments are directed to the committee member and only the person recognized has the floor. And we will do our best to act quickly if someone is clearly acting in a way that's inappropriate. Um, also like to remind people that we're always happy to receive comments by email, which are equally part of the public record. So please email us at citycouncilatnorthamptonma.gov. All right, I uh, do not see any raised hands. Anyone like to make a public comment? I see one raised hand. I don't see. Do you... Mary Jones. Okay. Hey, Mary. Hello. Councilor Thorpe, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Mary Jones. I live in Ward 2. Um, and I've lived in Northampton for three years. And I wanted to make a comment. I saw that later on the agenda, um, uh, one of the counselors has recommended that this committee look at the towing of vehicles and pending snow removal and operations. And I just wanted to share my recent experience with this ordinance as a renter in the community and why I think this should definitely be something that you consider moving forward. Um, so just so you know, I've lived all over places in this country where it snows a lot. I've lived in Indiana, I've lived in Michigan, my partners lived in Connecticut, and in no community have we ever lived in is there a blanket towing ordinance when there's a snow emergency. And so um, at this, you know, uh, first snowstorm of this year, um, uh, my experience was that I live in a large house that's divvied up into a bunch of different apartments. There's limited parking that's provided by our landlord and it's a first come first serve basis. And I work in Northampton, I work in retail. And so I've been working in person and a lot of my uh, housemates are working from home. And so those um, parking spaces are at a premium right now and I'm off working. And so before the snowstorm, I had just come back from my shift and my landlord requests that we don't park in certain areas where the snow was plowed before a snowstorm and all the other spaces were taken. So I parked on Forbes Avenue, which is a very small three, four block long street in Ward 4, thinking that I would be fine. And much to my surprise, the next morning, my car was missing. And um, again, I've lived all over. That's never been a policy. We've been in places where you get a warning before your car is towed, but never just taken. Um, and I'd never heard about this. And so I figured out it had probably been taken by the city, you know, did some calling around, found out that Ernie's towing is contracted to take the cars. And um, long story short, um, it got, it took me $200 to get my car back um, for this one infraction. And $200 um, is quite a lot of money for someone like me who's renting. It's a third of my monthly rent. It's um, two weeks of groceries. It's a lot. And fortunately, I'm working. Uh, we had that to spare. Um, but that seems like a really tall order in a very punitive way to try to deal with problem cars in a snow emergency. 
Um, and so I would like the, the council to really look critically at this ordinance and think about, I know there's ways that other communities have dealt with snow in a way that is not punitive by nature at first um, and perhaps um, gives people warnings before this happens to them, um, perhaps if it's a first time offense. And, you know, from my experience, you know, picking my car up at Ernie's Towing, you know, there's a lot, there's a wall of keys when there's a, there's a snow emergency and they pick up your key and that whole wall was full. So I know I wasn't the only person that got towed during that snow emergency and that was out $200 now because of that. Um, so that was my story. I wanted to share it and really have you think about how this really impacts renters in particular, who we don't necessarily have parking. We have to put our cars somewhere. Gosh, thank you very much for that. Any other raised hands? Nope. Okay. See. Okay, no. Laura, do you see him? No, I don't. Okay. Seeing no other raised hands, we will now close public comment. Moving on to next on the agenda, the approval of the minutes for December 7th of 2020. Move to approve. I hear a second. <laughs> Motion made by Councilor LaBarge, seconded by? Councilor Nash. Seconded by Councilor Nash, thank you. In, in, any point discussion? Of um, do, do we have the minutes yet? Not of the 15th. This is of December 7th. Yeah, oh. I'm one I'm, behind. Sorry. Nope, not a problem. Any discussion? Change the mayor, Council of Barge. I, no, I don't have um, any discussion to come forth, but I also want to thank our council clerk um, for the amount of minutes that she's doing for us at this meeting. I mean, this is a tremendous amount of work here. So thank you, Laura. Yep. Thank, you. thank you, Councilor Barge, for that. And I, 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 I definitely um, second what you uh, have said. So thank you, um, Laura Crutchler, for the work you do. So seeing no changes, Laura, can we have a roll call on the approval of the minutes? Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Thorpe. Yes. Member Peck. Yes. And Member Napolitano. Yes. Okay. That's passed. Moving on next to the agenda, request to consider ordinance 312-51. This will be a discussion with city councilor, Ward 2 city councilor, Karen Foster. And Laura, can you pull that up? Sure. That, and I'll have. Um, you wanna see the ordinance itself as opposed to yes. the email, okay. Let's see. Yeah. All right, here we go. Thank you. And as everyone just heard, we have this brought to our attention by um, Councillor Foster, but we also just heard from Mary as well in public comment. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, Councillor Foster, who is here with us this evening. And uh, I would like to um, open the floor to her for uh, discussion on this matter. So, um, Councillor Foster, whenever you're ready to uh, jump in here, please do. Thank you, um, Councillor Thorpe and um, to the others on the committee. I really appreciate the opportunity um, to be here and, and to think about it. Um, so, Mary Jones, also, I appreciated your, your public comment very much. Um, Mary is my constituent and was the one that that brought this to my attention in the first place and, and thinking of the opportunity where we are reviewing city ordinances. It just seemed like um, an opportunity to take a, a look at one that as Mary um, kind of rightly pointed out is going to have disproportionate impact, uh, particularly on people who are renting. Um, and as well, we know that people are going to pay a premium um, to rent apartments that have driveways and garages. And so, um, you know, they're, it is more likely that we're going to find lower rents um, with apartments um, or housing that does not also include off-street parking. 
Um, you know, and, and I've done some poking around um, Attorney Seawald. Obviously, you're going to be a much better resource on, on this than I am. Um, I've uh, spent quite a bit of time thinking about it and I've done some poking around to see what other communities are doing. And I'm not sure that anything I've seen in other Massachusetts communities are a grand step up. There are some that are, um, you know, only are ticketing and towing on main thoroughfares or even side, odd side, and, and that can get pretty confusing as well. Um, but something I ended up thinking about in relation to this that could also potentially have impact for other ordinances in the city is, you know, when landlords are renting to new tenants, there's already this tremendous amount of paperwork um, being exchanged. There's the lead paint disclosure, there's keys, there's the lease, there's a security deposit. There's already all of this happening. And it kind of got me wondering if, um, if maybe there's an opportunity in that exchange of, of information for information that's going to be pertinent to people who are newer to the city to know. Um, for example, what happens in a snow emergency and, and how to find out about it or how to sign up for the city's um, alert notification. So, you know, while it's true that the city does a tremendous amount of work to get the information out there, people who are newer, they're just not hooked in yet. And I mean, you can see the, the email that I had sent that's attached to the agenda. And, and I've been there. I remember when I was renting, racing to my car to interrupt a tow truck hooking up and, and you know, we could say, well, it's snowing and maybe I should have thought of that. And I probably should have, um, but, but people who are newer to town, they're just not gonna be hooked into those channels for information. Um, so, you know, I don't necessarily come with the answer tonight, but that was one thing I was wondering is it maybe in collaboration with the housing partnership, um, if there is information that we could then have distributed to new tenants from landlords during that process that all of this paperwork is already exchanging hands. Um, so that was one idea I had, like I said, looking around other snow removal ordinances. I didn't necessarily see anything that jumped out at me as being a step better. And I also understand um, the DPW needs to be able to, to clear the streets. It's a cost savings measure if they have to come back because cars are still there. You know, I get that that is really going to impede their operations. So that was the workaround that I was thinking of, um, but mostly just wanted to bring it to um, attention and really think about, um, you know, that it is going to have a disproportionate impact um, on people who are potentially transient, newer to the community and most likely lower income. Thank you, Councillor Foster, for bringing this to our attention. I greatly appreciate hearing what you what you said along with uh, Mary earlier. Um, members of the committee, any comments? Councillor Nash, you need to unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I have a question for both uh, Councillor Foster and for Mary. So uh, if, in Mary in particular, because she paid over $200 and I'm wondering, how much of that was a city fine and how much of it was the towing fee and, and storage? I, I'm wondering what portion was imposed by the, the city. So before we go forward with that question, Councillor Nash, are you asking that we acknowledge Mary oh. in this conversation since we closed public comment? Yeah, you know what? I you, I like your attention to detail, Counselor. So I'd like to uh, make a motion that we recognize uh, uh, Mary Jones uh, to uh, provide a little more testimony. Second. I'll second that. Second. Thank you. Okay, Mary, are you still with us? I am. If you give me one second, I can grab the receipt okay. and tell you everything Thank correctly you. instead of from my brain. Mary, I also have your email that broke it down. Oh, so I have the receipt that can tell you each item. Great. <laughs> this is so new and different. It's kind Isn't of it? great. <laughs> but you could never run home from council chambers to get the missing receipt. This is pretty fabulous. <laughs> Okay, so I paid Ernie's towing $171, and that included a fee um, for the Northampton police for the administrative fee for the towing that Ernie then pays them. 
And that was explained to me when I got the bill because I was honestly shocked by the bill. Um, and so, um, yes, so I paid, it says $25 police administrative fee ordinance, um, police mileage R-T 360, towing 108, storage 35. And then on top of that, I have a $25 um, ticket that I owe the city, which how it comes to about $200. So I vote, so the city is charging me at least 50 of that. Okay. Thank you, Mary. That was helpful, thank you. Um, I think, did Councilor Barge have her hand up earlier? Yes. <coughs> yeah. Okay, Councilor Barge. Yes, um, I had a funny feeling that the towing was gonna be the big expense because Mary, we've had this problem going on for quite a long time where people were complaining about their vehicles being told and not knowing about, you know, what the procedures were when it was snowing and so forth like that. But looking at the ordinance and especially 312-42, if you read that very carefully, removal of improperly parked vehicles plowing of snow or ice or in violation. Take a look at what the cost is. Liability of storage, $2, I think it says $2 for a 24 hour period and $1.50 for any lesser period. So here we're going down to the other um, 312.50, whatever it was on it. And the cost is phenomenal here. So I am questioning hearing what Mary is saying that we are paying whoever is being fined because of not being able to have the communication brought forth about what to do with her vehicle when there's a storm in that. I'm not going to say to DPW because I think that they have really done a, an efficient job getting it out there on the website, the flashing lights, whatever going on. I think like landlords should have the responsibility also of sending out letters to new residents coming in and living in these apartments to give them follow-ups of what is expected where they could park and so forth like that. But I am very concerned about the pricing here. I think it's outrageous that we have a police department that they are responsible for calling um, the towing companies and Ernie's at $171. And then she's talking about $50. I think she said went to the city in that. And a total, did she say 200 or 300 dollars? 200 approximately, 196 and some change. Right, that's a lot of money. So she's being charged for $25 was an administration fee. Another, what was that? a total of $50 to the police department, I think it was. I don't know. And DPW. I, I think we need to look definitely at the cost here. And are there other towing companies that might be cheaper that maybe the police department should start, start look at, looking at? Because to me, $171 plus the fact is how many days a person's car could be locked up because you don't have the financing. How do you get your vehicle out of there? So there's a lot of concerns and I thank you, Councillor Foster for you know, bringing this up because I think it's a lot of money. Thank you, Councilor Labarge. Councilor Foster. Thanks, this is really quick. And remember Napolitano, I see your hand. Um, I just, as we're calculating the costs as well, um, Mary, I didn't think to ask you how you got to your car, um, but one other cost, depending on who it is, is somebody would potentially need to pay a taxi, Uber, Lyft, or scrounge a ride to get to their car. So as we're thinking about what these costs and, and the imposition is, that's that's one more piece of the puzzle. Thank you. Member Napolitano. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I presume that, you know, the procurement process, you know, uh, allows for 
um, the you know the lowest bidder um, in accordance with all the regulations of the city and so forth. And I was just I just wanted to point out that maybe the way that we could address this is by recommending that there be a in, listed in the ordinances a maximum fine that's levied uh, because the way that it's written currently it just says. Um, uh, they shall, the owner shall pay for, I just lost it, but it's, it's the owner shall pay, paraphrasing, the owner shall pay for it, whatever the fees are, if any, basically. And so, it, you know, it could be a million dollars and that's what people would have to be responsible for. And so maybe the way that we could do it or the proper way that we would do this is limiting it in the ordinance. Um, uh, Megan. I hear a lot of issues. I, I, this might sound kind of scattered, but um, first of all, we had a very um, robust discussion with Nancy Fostall when she was here um, several meetings ago um, about parking. And a lot of this, I feel like, kind of applies. To so um, there's a piece I hear, like from Mary's um, comment, that the, there are a couple of pieces, and Karen's as well. Um, I'm sorry, Councillor. Um, the, that um, there's the there's there's a fact that there is a there is towing of vehicles um, during snow removal, um, um, which is um, difficult for people who don't have on the streets. There there's um, there are fines imposed by the the city. I think the council has the only has jurisdiction over that because otherwise, Attorney Seawold has informed us that. Um, this is all this the we, we can't really affect the the fact that there are there is there are parking fines and and towing but but the city can only set the fees um for that and also the um the other piece is that there's not enough um information or transparency about about um about this these, these fees and fines um so, um, so to the very last, so the address of the last issue, it also came up when we were talking about the, um, the Housing Notification, Civility Notification Act, um, which, you know, will require landlords to um, offer um, legal and financial resources and information and, you know, about tenants' rights with their notice to quit, but as you know, Councillor Foster has suggested, this is this is a really inf important information, along with other things related to the city, to to convey to new tenants. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I wonder if that I think, yeah, that is worth thinking more about, and whether or not we should incorporate that into um, some sort of ordinance. And uh, go ahead. Councillor Nash. Um, and also, um, Nancy Forstall of the Parking Department also um, said that they do have data about which, I think, which wards and streets um, have disproportionate numbers of parking tickets. Um, and I think that might be useful as well as we're thinking about how to um, maybe possibly creating more, you know, uh, street parking in those areas or um, how, how we can alleviate the, you know, the, the financial impact for um, residents in those areas. But please go ahead, Councillor Nash. Nope, it was, it was Councillor Labarge had her. And raise it first. Yes. Um, thank you. Councilor, Councilor Bard. Thank you. Um, I'm really concerned about section 312 through dash 42. It's the prices are altogether different. And then when you go into what we're talking about, I'm hearing $200. You need to look at 312 dash 42 and what it actually says here. The removal of improperly parked vehicles, a plowing of snow or ice, or are in violation. Independent contractors, just like with what we're talking about, Karen brought forth, okay, which um, the police department is, um, is 
in control of getting an independent contractor and and they have the duty to go ahead and select that contractor and the liability of storage is i don't know if it's two dollars lower if you can pull that up that's what i'm trying to do yeah three yeah. three twelve forty two for 24 hour period and a dollar fifty for any lesser period i don't understand this nope. Before Not unless we go, there's a typer there. I don't know. So before we go into this, I just want to, before we go into 312.42, um, which wasn't on the agenda for discussion and, and, and um, it could fall, Attorney Seawall can um, jump in if, if I'm saying anything incorrectly, but since that was not up for the discussion, that can come up under the remaining ordinances to review um, if we want to have that further discussion, since we're now dealing with only 312-51. I understand pointed, that. Yep. I'm having a problem with the 312-42 versus what we're working with. It's the, almost the same thing, but cheaper prices. I don't understand it. Okay. Maybe so Attorney Seawald can help us there. I just want to make sure we don't get off track with the agenda. Yep. You see, Walt, would you like to? Yes, good evening. Um, not to complicate things even further, but, but the real, the controlling ordinance is uh, 31. If you went to um, 312.31, that's the complete um, winter parking regulations. And when, you, when you're looking at 51, uh, it's referencing 31. Okay. And so 31 has in it the $25 fine. And I would remind the, uh, the counselors that um, we have adopted uh, chapter 40, section 22 F, which allows departments to set their own fees. Uh, the $25 is not a fee, it's a fine that you set, but departments set their own, uh, their own uh, fees for their administrative work. And so the, depart the police department has set its administrative fees for its administrative work. Um, and then the rest of it is, uh, is Ernie's fees. Thank you. Thank you, Counsel. Thank you, Attorney Seawald. Counselor Nash. Thank you. Um, so uh, first off, uh, I, you know, I, I, I see, you know, both member Peck and I are, are seeing uh, similarities going on with some of our conversations here that there needs to be better information getting out to renters in the city relating to their rights as tenants, uh, better information around uh, when, um, when the, we're, we're having important discussions related to zoning for the properties that they're renting at. And in this case, better information around um, when, um, when the, the parking bans are going into effect. Um, I, you know, I'm of the, the mind that you know, I, I think we need to have the parking bans because many of our streets are so narrow and that if, you know, if we allow people to, to park during the snow emergencies, we can't effectively plow the streets so that they're they're passable um that you know it's the nature of having an old city uh, that has a, a, a lot of you know narrow mm -hmm. uh streets um but i do think that you know we, we can start to see a pattern here around there's got to be a way to get better information and uh, as counselor foster pointed out this may happen at the at that point of where um uh, somebody is signing the documents um that it's been a long time since i signed a lease but i've bought some you know we bought our property more recently and you know you you sit there and you sign a lot of different documents acknowledging all of the stuff that's going on and having something in place that would acknowledge the renter's rights should something happen here's what happens when it snows and um so I'm, I'm seeing something there. I'm, I'm not quite sure where we want to go, where we want to go with that. But, um, but I, I could definitely see like an online file somewhere where people could just download and here's your renter's rights, click on that and there you go. Um, 
the other thought I had was this very much relates to the way uh, to our zoning that um, in terms of the the way we do parking in the city that um, in in the downtown area uh, the um, anybody who owns property is not required to uh, provide parking um, whether it's for uh, people who are residents or for um, or businesses that are um, renting space in that building when you get into uh, the the urban residential areas around uh, both the village centers and, and our sit in downtown um, there are parking requirements but that they also do not always um, uh, reflect what is actually needed for the residents in the building so there, you know, that the, the apartment itself may say, well, you know, per our zoning th that, you know, it's required two parking spaces, but it can have three of three bedrooms and people are renting three bedrooms. And I suspect that's more the case of what's been going on, you know, th that may have been what was going on with Mary here and with other people who rent in the city that, you know, that all of those bedrooms in the city are getting rented out. And, um, and there's not enough off-street parking, and that um, and that we've that we've left this this issue of like where do these people go? You know, we've created this parking pressure, and and the outcome is we have people like Mary coming to us and saying I got towed, and that um, there I I think I'm thinking that this is a discussion that. Uh, should also be kicked over to the planning board that um, that um, having them uh, re-explore the way we are doing creating that parking pressure because right now as as Councillor Foster has pointed out it, it's falling on renters it's it's not falling on pop property owners they they figure out a way to you know get that you know their vehicles on their property during snow emergencies and and the folks who rent are left trying to figure it out and scramble around and even when you do know you know you're, you're you got to figure out where the armory street parking lot is which i think i actually know now but um <laughs> so anyway i've talked a lot um thank you for listening thank you councillor nash do i see oh council labard um, I'm going to echo what Megan was talking about. I think it should be full responsibility of the landlords. I think that it should be their responsibility to educate the new um, clients coming in to rent an apartment. And it should be written out for them, just like you're talking about, Councillor Nash, signing papers. I've signed plenty of those owning property. And it's like, I think it belongs in the hands of the property owners to help and sit down with the clients when they're coming in to find out about what the cost of the apartment's gonna be and how many people and where they could actually park. I think landlords need to step in and help out. That's my feelings toward this. Thank you, Councilor Barge. Any other members? Um... Jeff, I do not see you on my screen. Would you like to make? Oh, oh but Megan has her hand up. Thank you, Megan. I just wanted to also add to what Council of just said. Um, and the um, Housing Civility Notification Act that I referred to earlier um, um, had a, uh, a fine attached to it to the landlords who did not offer, did not provide this information with their notices to quit. But um, it really is still diff very difficult to impose that kind of cost on landlords. Um, most of ours, I think, are um, we don't are are just um, regular homeowners who really rely on this um, rent as as their as their income, and um, we don't have the big corporate, you know, landlords um, of the cities um, that this ordinance is modeled on. Um, so we. Um, but what I think the planning department has found a way around that, which is to have um, an advocacy organization like the community action um, group um, 
offer this uh, information on a flyer. Um, and, you know, this, we could, if we could make this information available broadly, I don't know, on a city webpage or um, be disseminated by a, by a nonprofit or something. Um, in addition to, I mean, it would just, it would just kind of, kind of lower the transaction costs for the, um, for the landlords. Um, they don't have to actually compile this information themselves, right? They could just, if they could, it could be something like um, Councilor Nash that they could download um, from, from a city website or, um, and, you know, just, and we'll have other sorts, you know, it could be, there could be a Gazette article about this. Um, I just, you know, in general, it's just good community information and education in general. Um, and half this, half this town, as we know, are, are, are currently renters, so. Um, and I'm sorry, I think I wanted to go back to an, <laughs> something else that Councillor Nash, the response to Councillor Nash earlier. Um, there's another, and there's another piece of this um, towing problem that's, um, ha we haven't talked about, which is actual enforcement. Um, which is, is discretionary, really. I, you know, um, like Director Lascalia said, I think one of the communications to us that um, it's actually when the, um, when the trees came down in the storm in November, I think, she said every car on those, that street was in violation of the of parking rule. And yet I'm fairly sure that they weren't ticketed at the time. So we, maybe we could, you know, there's, there's a way to make allowances for certain certain areas that that have um, that are not um, you know throughways and um, where they really don't have many other options for parking um, uh, during snow emergencies. I that's just something I have to put out there. Um, oh, Ernie Seawald has his hand raised. Ernie Seawald. Not only is this related to the the land, you know, the landlord tenant issues we've been dis you've been discussion, discussing, discussing, uh, but this also links in some respect to the as of right to family unregulated additional units uh, and not requiring parking for these additional units. Just wanna put that out there. I also have some concern, and I haven't researched this, but uh, uh, about forcing landlords to speak, particularly speak against what they perceive to be their own interests, like providing legal um, information that will uh, be used against them. And um, I can understand why landlords might not wanna do that. And, you know, might, uh, uh, see this as forced speech. Uh, so I do like uh, member uh, Peck, I believe, was talking about having a separate nonprofit handle this. I think that's a great idea if, if we could find a way to effectively do that. Um, so I just put that out there. Thank you, Attorney Sue. Jeff Napolitano. So my question would be then, like, um, given that it's uh, it isn't the domain of um, the city to impose things directly on landlords, um, would it be a, a part of what what the city could do would be to establish like a, a how does the city identify who is a landlord and or not? I guess is my question. Um, Landlords don't have to. Do they have to register with the city? Like, how, how do how does how would we craft an ordinance that addresses the the tenant landlord relationship without uh, compelling landlords to you know issue speech that they might not agree with? Attorney Seawald, the assessors know um, how many units are in each building, and if there are more than one unit, we do. Um, 
assume that they are occupied by tenants if by anyone. But you could have a, somebody could assess, you know, uh, the house, that, you know, there might be one unit in a house, but you wouldn't necessarily know that they're a land, that the, the that they're a renter or a land or a homeowner, right? That is true. Unlike Amherst, we don't register rentals. They do in Amherst and it's a, it's a, a huge process. So, uh, right. So, so this is where I'm getting to like, how do we identify who's a, land, who's a renter or who's a landlord? Like in either of these situations, how, how would we identify that in Northampton? Well, imagine there are a lot of informal arrangements, you know, for, oh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, and with the new, um, is it two families by right uh, or ordinances, um, there will be more in the future. So um, yes, I, this was uh, another issue with the uh, with the housing notification, Civility Notification Act. We just don't, we don't know who to <laughs> apply this to. <coughs> so. Um, so yeah, it may make sense to just have, um, you know, broadly, broadly inform the community about all of this, um, other than. Now, Councillor Nash had brought up um, earlier um, regarding referring to the planning board. Um, Councillor Nash, you still. Yes, I would still support that idea. I'd like to make a motion to refer this to the planning board for, um, uh, for them to review and provide it that. Do I hear a second? I'm gonna second that. Okay. Motion's been made to refer that. I believe we need a vote on that, Laura. Yes. Um, you want to have discussion or nope. are you going right to vote? Nope. Any discussion? Nope. I'd like to hear from attorney. C Thank you, attorney Seawall for jumping out. I'd like to have. <laughs> uh, I just, normally there would be discussion on the right. on motion. You're right. Can I, can someone specify what it is? Can Councillor Nash specify what it is we're asking of the planning department? We're asking them to, that, that's a fair question. We're asking them to uh, look at the parking regulations and how this plays into creating parking pressures on people who rent. They're the folks who primarily are being, you know, that face the brunt of our, our towing. Uh, we, I, I can't remember a time where we've ever had a property owner coming in here to complain about their car being it's always some uh, you know, unfortunate person who rents and it happens just about every snowstorm. <laughs> so um, to, that the planning board explore ways that um, could help soften that burden on renters. Just a point of information. In relation to our, our land, you, you know, our, our parking requirements. Just a point of information. So who are we referring this to? Planning board. Planning board. Attorney Seawald? Yes. Would you like to be heard on this? No. No, okay, just wanna make sure. Any other, nope. I just want okay. to add one more thing that um, in terms of uh, good information that um, that what what Mary related is not unlike a situation I went through with some constituents of constituents over on um, on Hockenham Road, where, you know, they're informed one thing by the the landlord. And it's generally true. The landlord's not making something up, but during a snowstorm, these parking spaces go away. So where you think you can park all the time, those spaces are now gone. And now you're forced into this situation of trying to uh, figure out where you're gonna park. And having, I, 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 I know Attorney Seawald was voicing that we um, not 
put words in, in uh, landlords' mouths, but I, I would like it to have it much clearer as to what the actual parking, what parking tenants are getting with their when they're when they're leasing an apartment, because that's ultimately that's kind of what's going on underneath all of this is that you know Mary thought she had a parking space and then she didn't, and now it's snowing. And then she's heading out to Ernie's. <laughs> yep. So um, anyway. Thank you for that, Councilor Nash. Uh, Council LaBarge. Yes, and I have to agree again with Councilor Nash. I feel that the landlord, it should be the responsibility of them to go ahead and explain about snowstorms and about parking. And I know that for a fact. I have many friends who do own apartment places and they explain everything to them. So I think that's a lot of value there. And I, I like the idea of it going to the planning board also. Any other comments? Can't see Megan, I don't see. Laura has okay. her hand raised. I have my hand. Well, I might need a restatement of the motion that's on the floor because originally I thought we were just considering a motion to refer the 31251 to the planning board, not refer or to send it to them for their review and comment. But then Jim, Jim Councilman Nash, you stated that it was something else, a broader that we were referring and I'm not sure I captured exactly what we're referring to them. My apologies. I hope I can. I, I can tell you what I wrote down, but. All right, do that. That would be much better I said, than having. I, I said that you're asking the planning board to look at parking regulations and how these create parking pressures on people who rent. Uh, around towing in snow emergencies. Right. It's a specific situation here around towing in snow emergencies. Are we asking, are you asking, would you be asking that they look at 312-51 or 312-31? I believe that uh, attorney I'm Sewell- I'm either in front of me, so I, I'm, I'm assuming it's- 312-51 is what we're addressing that uh, Councilor Foster had um, brought to our attention. 312-31, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Please jump in. Attorney Seawald is the one Attorney Seawald had um, mentioned earlier in the meeting. Correct. It is uh, cross referenced in 51. 31 is referenced in 51. So, okay. what 51 is enforcing are the regulations that are set forth in 31. So, the planning board would have to look at both of them, which is logical because there is a cross reference between the two ordinances. Thank you, Attorney Seawald. How's that, Laura? Maybe you add just to broaden a little bit, like at all weather related kind of um, weather created conditions, whether uh, for towing. Um, so we can also um, address um, Director Scalia's, um, Scalia's um, concern about the, the towing when um, the the storm brought all the trees down in that area. Okay. Weather related towing. Ernie Seawalt. I don't think that uh, Director Lascalia, and I may be wrong about this, was referring to a weather related event. We were talking about the width of passing lanes that need to be retained, and that has nothing to do with weather. What she was saying is that so many streets are so narrow, we would have to put no parking signs on most side streets in the city in order to uh, comply with that. And that's why they've basically not enforced it, because if there's a conflict between allowing parking and allowing parking where you can allow uh, travel lanes that are required by an, a different ordinance. And so that's the rub. It's not, it's not, a, it has nothing to do with the weather. She was just pointing out that, you know, all of these cars that were damaged were illegally parked if we enforced the travel lane requirement. Megan? Any? No, I'm no. fine. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Councilor LaBarge, I can't see you. Do you have any further discussion? No, I'm fine. Is everyone ready to vote? 
Laura, roll call, please, on making a referral to the planning board. Um, Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Member Peck. Yes. And Member Napolitano. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm just thinking practically, maybe I can just CC Councillor Nash and the, well, the chair and vice chair when I send this request to the planning board. So if they need clarification, they can uh, check back with you. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Moving on, next on the agenda, discussion around the meeting schedule. Last time we spoke, we had um, picked our meeting dates for so far up in, for Mondays uh, based on uh, member Napolitano um, and his schedule. So right now we're, our next dates are January 11th, 2021 and February 11th, 2021, which are both Mondays. Uh, so this is now open for further discussion around the schedule and any uh, additional dates. Uh, Councilor Bart. Yes, um, our next meeting is what, January 11th? Next week. Mm -hmm. And do we have another one? February. No, 1st? not January, right? Just January 11th. That's it. That's it we have so far. And we went to we have one February in February. I have February to remind first. Was it the first? Mm -hmm. It was the okay. first. Yeah, February 1st, right? Right. Based on one of the members' schedule. We kept it on Mondays for right. So, and now that Mr. Uh, Jeff is back, we can all have a further discussion on additional meeting dates. Jeff, is there, is, is Monday just the only day is pretty much that's gonna work for you? Um, um, until um, the end of the first week of February, I, I actually work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays <clears throat> from 5.30 to 9.30. So is February 8th okay on a Monday? Yes, that would be fine by me, yes. And the 15th, oh, that's present, is that a legal holiday, President's Day? I believe so. Yes. When we had initially scheduled um, my that those classes that I facilitate um, weren't happening, um, but they started, and so that's why um, Tuesday through Thursdays aren't good for me until basically the eighth of February. Then I'm then I'm free again. Okay. How about February twenty second? Is that okay? Works for me. Other members. Uh, it works for me. So February 22nd. Oh, we got the 8th to play with. The fifth, No, we can't. The 15th, that's a holiday. And the 22nd. Right? So three Mondays. So, we want the, so we, we're going to meet the 1st, the 8th, and the 22nd? Yep, that will give us one, two, three meetings for that month. Other members, any yes. comments? Attorney Seawald has- Attorney Seawald. Did I understand um, from Member Napolitano that uh, after February 8th, it doesn't have to be a Monday. Is that right? Correct. Right, yes, it doesn't have to be a Monday after February 8th, yeah. So we can fill in after February, between February 8th and February 22nd. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have a conflict on Tuesdays? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine on the 8th. I'm fine on the 22nd. What about, uh, I heard a Tuesday thrown out there. What about uh, the 9th or the 16th? I can do the 16th so far. I can't do the 9th. The 16th is open for me as well. If I cannot, I cannot. You, you, you can't do the 16th? Council Bar? I'm not sure yet. Oh, okay. I have to double Here's... check, but I suspect I have a uh, TPC. Mm -hmm. So I might arrive late. Okay. So should we? There's a, a, 
a slight complication in that if a Tuesday meeting does go past seven, um, you may, may hear a, um, a trumpet in the background. I... Okay. Uh, so, 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 so right now I, I would like to hear from, I uh, just want to make sure it's um, Council, uh, Attorney Seawalt, um, it's okay if he can be here as well. So are we, am I hearing right now, February 1st, 8th and 22nd? Good for me. Okay. So not, not the 16th? No. Nope. So we got the first, we got the eighth, and we got the 22nd. Oh, because that was, okay. No, we could yeah. do it on a Sunday, Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> do we want to look into March? Yes. Okay. Because our report has to be due by the 31st, you know, or before. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's start planning. March 1st. Excuse or me, no, March 8th. Or five Mondays. I see Councilor Barge with her hand up. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm a little confused with the dates here. February 1st, we're not going to do anything the week of the 8th on. No, we have the we have February first, we have February eighth, and we have February twenty second. Hey, I didn't hear the February eighth. Nope. Five thirty. Yes. Thank you. So now we're doing March first. March. Do we want to March first, or do you want to go to March eighth? I don't care. Members? Uh, I'm, okay. I'm available. Mr. Chair, uh, it looks on the city calendar is the eighth is um, legislative matters, I believe. Okay, thank you. What time is that, Laura? Uh, five. At five o'clock. Well, depending on what's on legislative matters agenda, you know, I, right. I can be here. Um, I, I'm not sure, but I'm never quite sure what's going to be on, on their on their plate for that particular meeting. So, um, right. so we, yeah, I mean, to be safe, we could do the first and the fifteenth. Yep. No, that's President's Day. Is it? Oh, wait a minute. No. No. March no. 15th. Yep. March 15th. Month. So it is city services and community resources, but well, I guess 530 is not a conflict. March 1st, the city service from four to five. Right, so that's okay. okay. So if we do at 530, where's the... Right, okay. We're and okay there, right? I don't know about community resources, whether they'll... Be... That's on the 15th, Laura? The 15th, yeah. And okay. what time is that? That's a five. That's yeah, usually a five. Um, um, what time does it usually get over, Jim? Well, you know, it, it, it's, I, yeah, I'm not sure if we will have something referred to us for March. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know what, I, I, I'm gonna suggest that we schedule this and no. that um, as the chair, um, if we have an option around what it is we're going to be discussing, discussing for community resources, um, I'll, I'll try to uh, move that to another month. I mean, if something's referred to us and we need to act on it, then we will need to meet. But um, I say, let's, you know, we're, we're going to be under the gun to get stuff done here. So let's, let's schedule this and, um, and I'll work to make sure it's we're, you know, I'm available. Thank you, Councilor. Is, are we talking about March 8th? No, we said March 1st and the 15th. Okay. Um, Attorney Seawald, do we, can you clarify if we need to have the full report done or at least a draft of it completed by the 31st or do we just need this not meet? Uh, no, the, the, the only deadline you have is for filing your report. There's no, nothing in the ordinance about um, about when you meet. So the the report has to be filed by the thirty first. 
And yeah. so we'll have to spend a couple of meetings talking about the, the contents of that report. Right. Yep. And do that outside of the meetings. Okay. So could we propose um, more rather than less meetings and then subtract them if we don't need to continue meeting? Good idea. To the mm -hmm. last week. Okay. So right now so, for the month of March, we have two meetings, correct? Yes. Okay. Seems like it would be good to have a meeting the 5th to finalize a report on the 29th, perhaps if it's due the 31st. The 5th of what? Um, I'm sorry, did I say? Yeah, 5th. Uh, 5th Monday? The 5th Monday, yes, thank you, yes. the 29th. I get it. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yes, I agree too. So okay. 3 three one, three fifteen, and three twenty nine. Okay. Anything the week of the twenty second, or should we leave? Could you repeat the dates again for me? Wait, uh, Laura. I just have a question. I'm wondering, does the ordinance call for us to file the report in the city clerk's office or with the council? It's because the if it's, okay, because then we could do that. Because there's no council meeting, of course, after the 29th. So and then the clerk sends it to the mayor and to the council. Okay. Thank you. So to answer uh, Councilor Barge, it was March 1st, March 15th, and March 29th. Thank you. Any other dates? Do we want to uh, try, you know, toss the the twenty second in there using Member Peck's um, approach that if we don't need it, we can always cancel it, but it's easier to get it scheduled. That's true. Any other comments from members regarding that? The twenty second. Sure, that sounds like a practical okay. idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So all the Mondays in March. 530? Except one. We're not doing the eighth. Okay. First, 15th, 22nd, and the 29th. Okay. Okay. Good? Yes. Okay. All right. Moving on to the next item on the agenda, which is the format slash structure of the final report. This is now open for discussion. We have highlighted bucket number one, which is the housekeeping changes. And thank you, Laura, for preparing a, a draft of that. Um, bucket two, which is the solicited and unsolicited recommendations for ordinance changes. And bucket three, which is the ordinances reviewed for impact on marginalized communities. So now it's open for discussion. No hands. Oh, oh Megan. Well, I want to put this on the agenda because it would help. I thought it would help us in the coming three months um, with our um, with our work plan. Um, I started a an executive executive summary of sorts, um, and I could I could send a rough draft around to everyone before the next meeting. Um, You know, it really just talks about how, um, you know, our, our charge and how we we um, come to review. I'm, I want this, well, I want this report to be user-friendly um, and hopefully um, linked on the website because I think the audience for this is more than just the council and the mayor's office. Um, we've attracted, um, interest already from advocates and others that influence the policy process. And um, I think some of our recommendations can affect a large number of people. So um, just, you know, just in the interest of more transparency, I want just want to be very clear about like how we set the parameters for our review. 
you know, why we decide to look at certain ordinances and not others, because otherwise there's an element of like randomness or arbitrariness here, like out of the thousands possible, why do we look at the specific or the selection of um, current or proposed ordinances or, um, and also just like ordinance adjacent kind of policies, right? Um, so, um, I think it would be helpful to review like the kind of the relevant demographics that informs and guides us. Like planning departments that they have, um, they have some of this like the racial breakdown for renters versus homeowners um, and parking department has, um, they can tell us which particular you know areas of the town are impacted by the ticketing. Um, so I think this is all kind of good background to have in our report. Um, let's see. So I just want to be forthright about what our objectives and limitations are as an advisory group um, and the fact that we really rely on the work of many other, um, all these other voluntary boards and um, city agencies and, and counselors um, um, to do our work. So, you know, I just, I just feel like there should be a little more, I want to put a little bit more thought into this because um, we don't have a precedent for this, really have a precedent for this type of committee. And, you know, maybe future ones can learn from us, like how, you know, perhaps we need, they want more or less time to do this. Um, do we need more or fewer members of the council or public? Um, you know, with maybe different areas of expertise. Um, do we need to start with a narrower mandate? Um, do we need to, you know, have formally invite the public to hearings? Um, so all of these things will, I just want to be able to answer in our report. But um, I do have, I've started an executive summary and I could, I could share that with everyone. I'll send it to, to Laura for the next meeting. Um, and then we can, um, I feel like there are a couple, we have, we have, um, we have, to, we have discussed um, ordinances and ordinance adjacent policies in a couple of areas we, we deemed important, which like zoning, um, rental housing, um, parking, and there might be a few more other categories that we might want to broach before. Uh, in the next few months. Um, I mean, we're, I think um, Councillor Thorpe reminded us that we need to invite, we're gonna invite the, the fire department staff to one of our meetings soon. Um, yeah, so, and, um, you know, there are other areas that were identified by the National League of Cities as, um, Er, you know, areas that disproportionately affect marginalized communities, like um, you know, recreation or, you know, um, purchasing and hiring. Um, we haven't had anyone, I don't think we have anyone solicit those uh, specific ordinances for us to look at um, or propose anything yet, but, you know, that could be part of our bucket three things that we you know, in our own committees, like, you know, that we investigate or discover um, in these next couple of months. So that's, um, does anyone have, any, has any, oh, I think Councillor Labarge. Well, we're, we're going to, um... I want to hear from the other members regarding this, but before we start, I'm going to get to you, Councilor Barge. I, I just would like to throw out to all the members, since we're talking about this report, just to consider while we're moving along here, is it best to have the city solicitor at least start part of this report 
since he has done something similar to this in the past, and then we add to it. So just something to think about that. So Attorney Seawall's here, he's, you know, he can, you know, at least get this started. He, you know, just to think about, it, I'm gonna open the floor now, but just something to consider that, like letting him start this, but we can add to this, you know, um, as we move forward. So um, Councilor Barge, I see your hand is up. Thank you, because I just was gonna mention that. That's an excellent idea, um, Councilor Thorpe. But also too, I, um, I question for our council clerk. You had notified other departments, right? And at one point, weren't you waiting for answers from, was it the Department of Public Works? Yeah, that's the only department that I know has some changes that they haven't yet sent. But and, I did, yes, send it to all city department heads. Right. And the DPW, I um, will just let the um, members know uh, that they're, they're there may not be anything. It's something that's still being worked on. I, I did have a brief discussion uh, with uh, Donna earlier today. So that's how that came up, so. Okay, great, thank you. We asked, I think we asked, uh, I asked Attorney Seawald last time in the last meeting whether he, he has a preference for um, drafting this report or not and I, I think you said it was up to us. Um, yes. So yep. I, and I believe when we last left off, um, we were going to, or there was suggested like, I thought maybe there would be something proposed or you would um, have something presented. We didn't really ask him to start it, but you know, I'm thinking now that we're getting down that we might wanna have him start something sooner rather than later and then um, go from there. And we just want to make sure Megan's yes. finished first. No, no, I was just, I was just, um, I'm sorry, I was rambling about this, but um, just a way for, I, I want to have this organized work plan going forward, knowing where um, kind of the gaps are. Um, yep. Review. Um, so. Okay. Councilor Nash. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, Member Peck, I would appreciate seeing uh, your uh, your draft remarks, and I I think it would be great if um, you know we could one of our next meetings we 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 have that um, those presented, and we we can see what direction you're 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 thinking we should go in. And um, you know, I do think we're doing something different than in the past, and um, and I think that falls under our bucket number three there. You know that. Um, that um, I, I, yeah, so I, 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 I think that would be great to have that and we could discuss it in more detail next time. I, I do want to say that we, um, that um, the, the framework that we've laid out, we can see that it's already pretty effectively working. You know, bucket number one, it, you know, with Laura's grid, you know, with her spreadsheet and with the, you know, the, the recommendations are coming in. They're taking form in that, in that, you know, straightforward bucket. It, it, that's great. Um, the next two, I think we're going to want to talk more about, and and I think um, uh, having those draft remarks is going to help us frame how we're going to tease out um, addressing those next two things. But the good news is, it looks like bucket number one is is taking form here, it, it, it's going to happen. It, the, the work is going to be on bucket number two and three. So um, that's my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the, 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 the it's, not, it's not a concern, but the, the issue or, um, I mean, one aspect of the report is just that <clears throat> I don't think that we necessarily for everything need to uh, um, unless we like uh, statutorily need to like pass along a draft ordinance. I think in some cases we might want to um, just say uh, in right, right to the, the council, to the, the, the mayor, uh, for instance, uh, you know, the, the, the issue between renting and homeowners is a, is, a, is a line that needs to be observed and addressed in Northampton. 
um, the other cities do X, Y, and Z, we might want to consider doing one of these things here. I, I'm just saying that like what we, what we forward along uh, hopefully we'll be able to be more than simply a draft, but actually sort of a narrative or a, a recommendation that, that may, be, may be really specific, but not necessarily in ordinance form. Yeah, yep. that's exactly what I was trying to get at. Um, it's kind of like our, our, the background for what we're doing. Um, we can, we need to, I feel like we're able to kind of zoom out. We don't have to, you know, away from very specific ordinances and talk about like the, the rationale for why we select, why we're looking at certain types of laws and, you know, the, and why we're particularly concerned about um, these particular groups of people. Okay, please. Attorney Seawald. I'd like to uh, second what uh, member Napolitano said and uh, go one step further. I think we should not be drafting new ordinances. Um, it's fine in, in the housekeeping, we have very specific changes, but you know these are very, very time consuming exercises. I've been spending hours and hours on the charter amendments that uh, Laura will be in your box tomorrow. And, and so um, unless you know that the council is going to want to adopt these, I would suggest that we not draft any uh, ordinances because as I said, it's very time consuming. And even at my modest rates, they are, it gets to be very expensive for the city to draft ordinances that, that the city council may not be interested in. Thank you, Attorney Seawall. Thank you, Attorney Seawall. So in essence, we're kind of, kind of aiding in the kind of the background research because we have the, we have the ability to um, invite and review, um, kind of systematic, systematically, a lot of different policies. And um, yeah, I feel like that's really where we can apply their, that that's the strongest role that we can play. Like what, are, like what are the, what are the needs of this town, and what are the the challenges and um, where are the resources and who are the, you know, who are the actors and um, yeah, I, and some of them may uh, eventually turn into ordinances, but um, most of the ideas that have percolated through this committee are still, you know, fairly nascent, so. Councillor Nash, and then Councillor Labarge. I think Councillor Labarge was in front of me. Was she? Okay, Councillor Labarge. No, you were first. Okay, <laughs> all right. I'll do I, it. <laughs> I, I just I'll like to pick up on something that Member Peck had mentioned, uh, the idea of getting some demographic information. Um, I know that um, Director Fiden, uh, part of the, I mentioned a list of, you know, residents in the city that's mm -hmm. actually compiled from the census. And, um, and that the planning department has that demographic information and, um, you know, maybe give us a better idea of, you know, who, who is in town, where they live. And, and then we start to see, well, hold it. There's all of this towing going on where these particular people live. Of, of course, they're gonna be impacted more. So that I think it would be interesting to have, uh, very helpful to have uh, Director Fiden come speak to us um, in one of our meetings to just present on that information. Hmm. Councilor Labarge. Yes, I'm gonna echo what Councilor Nash suggested about um, our department head Wayne Biden come in. I think that's the right direction to go into. Um, also too, I wanna thank Jeff. I think that is the right direction. And I wanna thank our city solicitor because I think we're going out of what we should be doing here and staying right with what we should be doing, which is cleaning house and looking at our ordinances that where we need to change other departments, we're waiting for another department to give us information about language changes. So that's it. Anyone else? 
Okay. So I do know, Megan, you're going to send out a rough draft to um, us regarding what you'd like to have included in the report. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, not a, should we, are, not a are we Should we attorney hold Seawall. off on asking Attorney Seawall to at least get the ball rolling on the first the draft of this report, or should we ask that he at least get started on this now, members? Do you think? Okay. Council DeBart. Yes, do you think maybe we could have Attorney Seawall right now be in this, involved in this comp? conversation is he, he's always involved in this conversation he he, he is he, we work under his supervision so i, I would <laughs> like to hear from attorney seawald i mean this is what we're here it says under the city solicitors we're, we're under his supervision so he's here he's always invited <laughs> my feeling is we're we're it's a little premature to get started really not going to take me i mean all i could really do right now is the you know the housekeeping i can take care of i'm happy to do that but you've already you already know what those changes are right. uh and uh, you know, I'd like to hear a little bit more before I start drafting. And I, you know, we've got three months, so uh, I'm, you know, whatever I would draft now would be so skeletal. I'm not really sure it would be helpful. Let's have a, another meeting or two and see where we are. Sure. That would be thank my suggestion. That. Thank you, Attorney Stewall. Thank you. Thank you. So that took care of that. Yes. And under bucket one here, Laura. I mm -hmm. see every, this has already been submitted to attorney Seawall, correct? Yes, all of these okay. have been reviewed. Thank you. Good. Any further discussion on the format structure of the final report? Well, I expect, I expect whatever I'm sending around is just something for us to look at. It's just a starting point. Um, it's more, uh, yeah, I expect a lot of changes. And of course, um, Attorney Seawald is going to be, you know, the, the primary writer of this report. So. Megan, we look course, forward to No comments between meetings on the draft. I have to say that. Thank you. Nope. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Moving on next to the remaining ordinances to review further research needed work plan for second phase. I think we mm -hmm. kind of covered that. I, I just like to, too. it's on the agenda. We're just. Yeah, I, th I think we took those two items and kind of banged them both out at the same time. Okay. Okay. Jeff, I don't see you. I just want to make sure that. I'm good. Good, thank you. Yep, I'm, okay. I'm usually not shy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Shy Jeff Napolitan. Just like to make sure. All right, the last item is uh, motion to adjourn. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion. Motion made by Council Labard. Second. Seconded by. Megan just seconded. I seconded. Oh, did she? I didn't hear. Thank you. Seconded by Megan. Laura, roll call, please, on the motion to adjourn. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Member Peck. Yes. And Member Napolitano. Yes. Okay. The meeting's adjourned. I'd like to thank everyone for being here this evening. We will see each other next week. <laughs>